music lovers, this is Spike Jones inviting you to come with us to the Opera House for a city slicker performance of the opera Carmen. Well, I'm not going to take you to the opera. You have just witnessed what could be either called a false flag operation or a bait and switch. Instead, I'm going to deliver on the promises of a headline that probably made you curious to begin with. It will, however, take a little time to do it properly. It is also Christmas time, so rest assured that I will make a decent effort to sugarcoat and respect a season of joy, celebration and hope. Here, you see the latest annual report from my previous employer, Alpha Laval. Or rather, you don't. I've just printed the front page and added some blank sheets below. As stated in an old Monty Python classic, It's only a model. The annual report repeatedly declares that the company provides transparent management and adheres to the law. The funny thing is that the law for publicly traded companies dictates transparent management. I'll get to that later. So as an advertisement strategy, it corresponds to a car manufacturer stating that below the dashboard you will find a pedal which enables a vehicle to be brought to a standstill if it pleases the driver to do so. Not the first funny detail of public information from Alfa Laval. They once promoted equipment providing clean drinking water with the message that clean water prevented thirst. This is wrong. Food prevents hunger, but just a rudimentary knowledge of human physiology would tell you that clean water prevents the effects of contaminated water. Publishing a poster message ignorant of that fact is rather condescending, I'd say, at least utterly stupid. And on February the 23rd, 2017, Alfa Laval sent me on garden leave with a document whose author could not spell her own name. When this video is over, you will realize to an even higher extent the bearing of this statement. Concerning most of the management representatives outside of my own department, I have consistently observed an intellectual vapor pressure below floor level. Did I just draw a picture of unsupported self-confidence, also known as pompousness within Alpha Laval, a kind of self-sufficient closed loop of people scratching each other's backs? Watch here. Let's start with a blank sheet and add the board of directors to the highest decisive organ within Alpha Laval. Each late summer they will nominate a nomination committee, a board will with, which will decide uh, which candidates that the voters can vote on for the upcoming General Assembly. If we to that process add what is called Förderhandsröstning in English advanced voting, you have an entirely closed system, you could say that Alfa Laval has re raised the drawbridge bridge. The people populating this closed loop represent less than half of the shares, so the effect of this loop is that whatever the shareholder majority might want, they will never have a chance to get it, unless there is some kind of an injection point. The law is very simple and gives every shareholder a very broad range of possibilities. We are talking about the Swedish Aktiebolagslagen, Chapter 7, Paragraph 16. It is a very broad paragraph, only limited in scope by Paragraph 32. Some of you may have attended an annual general meeting without realizing that the people on the podium did not answer questions just because they were nice and open-minded. They are actually obliged to respond to any shareholder initiative which does not force them to disclose business secrets. Secrets come in many flavors, but something that could instigate a change in management direction or might change the outcome of an election for the board can only be embarrassing and not a business secret. If, on the other hand, I chose to ask questions about an untapped centrifuge invention leading to a lighter centrifuge with less noise, less energy consumption and higher performance, Top management could invoke paragraph 32 and refuse to answer. So you can ask all kinds of questions. Some questions will be embarrassing for the one who answers. Some will be embarrassing for the one who asks, as demonstrated in this excerpt from one of the first Woody Allen movies. Any questions? Do you think a girl should pet on the first date? What? Uh, I mean, if, if both parties involved are mature and liberal. This is somewhat out of scope, but why is the law so open? 
Well, in a world where the right information will never be at the right place at the right time, there may be a number of ways to do things right. But Mr. Thomas Edison once realized this. So, the law has to cover everything that any foolish public company management could get wrong and allow the shareholders to rectify. In this light, you should consider what the legal advisor of the Alpha Laval Board of Directors, Emma Adlerton, told me at the last Alpha Laval General Meeting. We will never answer your questions. She too is not what we in Denmark call the sharpest knife in the drawer. I have interacted with her for years, sometimes on her initiative, sometimes on mine, so I translate her statement into legalese. As Akshay Bolak's slogan is both unambiguous and entirely open, her statement can be further translated into this. A top management willpower not to answer questions must be a willpower to violate the law. I call it a conspiracy here, you could call it a criminal intent as well. If you do not believe that Mrs. Adlerton said so, feel free to ask her. Mrs. Adlerton can of course falsify my quote by answering the questions. They are right here. What you see is four copies, each identifying itself as containing Ereden Enlit Kunde Kapitel Sextonde Paragraph Archibolak's Slogan. Each of the copies bears postal office markers which indicate that it has been brought over Öresund and that the postal authorities have sent three messages to Alpha Laval for each letter. Thus, the postal authorities have on my behalf knocked on Alpha Laval's door 12 times within the last months, each time manifesting my undisputed initiative read right to initiative. If the board did not know what was in the envelopes, we might all be observing gross negligence right now. Remember that Erdogan is the only means for the shareholder majority to reach the minority acting on their behalf, but staying behind the raised drawbridge. That would, at any rate, be a violation of the law. But in the context of a Mrs. Arterton's statement, the only possible explanation is that the board does know what is in each envelope. Or rather, they must think that they know it, as they have obviously never opened any envelope. I might have decided that the envelopes should not be identical. I might, because I am on a good day a pretty nice and forgiving guy, have put 12 Danish 500 kroner bills into one of the envelopes so that the board members could have a nice night in town before being put on display, as I will do it in a few minutes. I have been told that nightlife and criminality go well together, so they might even meet some fellow spirits while spending my money. Mind you, the corner would be of the Danish kind, so bang for the buck should be within reach. While on tour, the board members could keep their spirits up by singing this song. Oops, I did it again. Or perhaps rather. Me as a nice guy? Humble at least as each of my statements toward Alpha Laval representatives have contained some kind of a humility clause. The one in the envelopes goes like this. I can only conclude that the envelopes contain some rather juicy questions and that the answers must be even juicier and, of course, the responsibility of the board at large. Of course, I know what is in the envelopes, and of course, I have a pretty good idea of the answers. However, I have my reasons not to disclose more than this. We are dealing with illegal management policies where each employee is subjected to two sources of job instructions, which on a bad day may contradict each other. Both due to profitability and due to the mental health of the employees, there should, of course, only be one source. What would be the point of forcing an employee to obey instructions which do not comply with company values, business principles, whatever? Nevertheless, this is what I frequently observed during my years of Alpha Laval employment. HR representatives were always subordinate to the closest manager, so the employee had no choice 
but to forget the sayings of the business principles and go right when going up. This is, by the way, one aspect where Alpha Laval management could be called contemporary. In 1967, all Swedes terminated their old habit of keeping to the left. If a lonely wolf considers leaving the pack and go to the left, the Alpha Laval that I knew thus had a total package of instruments to force the employee into mindless subjugations, as this Swedish classic tells it. Du ska göra som Svensons gör och inte skilja dig från mängden. Du ska tro det som Svensons tror om du ska tro något alls. För att jämt vara den som stör kan inte löna sig i längden. Du ska göra som Svensons gör om du gör något alls. I find that practice meaningless and I once made a legal counsel for Alla Falabal confirm that it is illegal too. Corporate values or business principles must be different names for the same thing and a source of guidance which no manager can dispense with. Otherwise, the principles should never have been there in the first place. Now, let us take a look at the board members. Each presents her or himself with some credentials and a share size. Right here, we should start to get suspicious. Wouldn't it be the fundamental duty of the board members to make good decisions, or even better, to facilitate good decisions? What would the share portfolio size have to do with it? I have several times told the board members that I am not them and they are not me. So please ask them instead of me. If you are an Alpha Laval shareholder, you could even apply your right to ask questions. What is more than puzzling is that the shares owned by board members, as documented, aggregate to less than 0.06% of the total amount of shares. Why do they bother to provide information like this? I can see one point. Until recently, things were different, so we are simply observing a meaningless artifact. Until early this year, the company Tetra Laval, controlled by the Rousing family, owned a little less than 30% of the shares. Thus, stating the share portfolio size made some kind of sense in the good old days of 2022 and before. Under all circumstances, the Alpha Laval Board of Directors is responsible for the entire package of observations. In theory, voting by share size might be codified in some internal procedures of the board, but in the interest of the shareholder majority, this should not happen with really important decisions and definitely not with decisions whether to follow the law or not. With that in mind, I will identify exactly who is responsible for the state of today and mark each individual with the color red.
To me, it makes sense to continue the color coding with the CEO. After all, he is located in a position where he is in full control. He must be the guy who made the decisions which the board is then trying to cover up. It makes no sense that it should be the other way around. If Mrs. Mädel Svensson asked a question, I expect that she would receive a response. Actually, questions were answered at the recent annual general meeting, so it must be my questions, those questions, that the board has decided never to answer. Never. Doesn't never mean that I or an agent of mine can invalidate any future annual general meeting by simply sending an envelope once a year and make sure I actually have, that it is properly received? Doesn't it mean that I have the keys to all future annual general meetings? And doesn't it mean that whatever I have done, I have prevented Alpha Laval from operating? Just one annual general meeting with a chairman outside the loop, it happened in 2020, and everything will come to a halt due to the willpower residing with the board not to answer my questions. How did I accomplish that? I'm not going to tell you, but it should go without saying that I must have had some interaction with the other wearers of Christmas hats and that I must have played my cards pretty well. After all, power is always given and never taken. As my off-the-shelf tactics, I have applied a variant of this statement attributed to US President Theodore Roosevelt. My documented humility corresponds to speak softly and very, very discreet. And my big stick is the law in various incarnations. By the way, this is the sharpest knife in my household. Sticking to sticks, I have never had any intention to use it. I have other means to make Alpha Laval talk. You could also say that destiny has allowed me to adhere to this principle as phrased by the German philosopher Karl Schmidt. In case you don't believe me, let me present to you the straw that recently, instead of my legal and futile way of communicating through Arendon, may have broken the camel's back. This email from me to the big sister, Kirsten Rausing, of the Rausing brothers, Finn and Jörn. Note the humility clause for the umpteenth time. Immediately afterwards, the apparently good days of Tetra Laval dominance referred to previously were converted into the good old days. This weird transfer of shares away from official Tetra Laval ownership must be due to my suggestion that the Rousing brothers have, basically, been a couple of naughty boys deliberately destroying their toy instead of taking good care of it. 
expecting that the rousing tree wanted to sell that damaged toy to some ignorant buyer, I have installed a well-known Swedish company as confidant and informed the rousings that if they sell their shares without encouraging the buyer to ask my envelope questions, they are right here, they will instigate a bait and switch or a false flag operation and I will tell the new owners so. I have dubbed this maneuver targeted shorting. My basic tool is, of course, the content of these envelopes. Two observations. I have observed the original rousing share portfolio move away from where it once was. This I have just shown you. I have also observed it staying there for about nine months. I must believe that my actions indirectly sent the portfolio to the limbo where it is now and indirectly have forced it to stay there. This is some kind of power, I'd say, achieved through hard and lengthy work and some expenses too, but with no income at all because Alpha Laval top management is, anyway, in the habit of sticking to illegal annual general meetings, closing this loop as permanently as the never of Mrs. Arterton's statement indicates it. I am not them and they are not me. I stick to the law and they don't. I promise you an interesting and documentable story they bait and switch all the time. I wear a Christmas hat because Christmas is near. They wear Christmas hats because I have blemished their portraits with the color red. I can move 29.5% of the shares and I can argue that I, due to having no problems with any Swedish law, represent 100% of the shares. According to their self-presentation, they represent less than 0.06% of the shares. I am not them and they are not me. I attach some relevant links for you to verify. As previously indicated, I also omit some documentation, cutting some corners for simplicity and ease of presentation. Are we witnessing a tragedy or comedy? Please see some hope for an Alpha Laval until now managed by pompous decision makers, apparently sticking to self-feeding loops, raised drawbridges and ignoring my injected errand. Mrs. Arterton's statements we will never answer your questions. Also documents some kind of awareness concerning the stuff that they will not talk about to me or to any other shareholder outside the self-feeding loop. If Kirsten Rausing has given the naughty Rausing brothers some sisterly advice, that initiative of hers might also lead from embarrassing wrongdoing to something better. On such issues, I have lots of hope and no exact knowledge because Alpha Laval illegally refuses to inform me or any other shareholder majority representative. We are, however, all Alpha Laval supporters and Alpha Laval decision makers in one way or another, each according to the ability which the good Lord gave us. Therefore, I will finish up thanking you for attending my tour de force of delivering on the promises which I made at the start. I will wrap up the show singing an excerpt of the traditional Swedish hymn for December the 13th and end with a slight change which aligns itself with the story that I just told you. Trolls hejd o mörker makt Ljust du betvingar Trolls hejd o mörker makt Ljust du betvingar Trolls hejd o mörker makt Ljus du bit vingar, trål sig du mörker makt, ljus du åpet vingar. Det är på väg vi byter till, mänsklighet.